I am very excited to share that we are nearing the end of the big renovation we are doing on our house, which if you haven't been following along on Instagram since February, a big portion of my house has been under renovation. We ripped out all of the kitchen, the back sunroom, the bathroom. Um, we had to clear out the whole first floor when we refinished all the floors. And it's definitely been a process not living like with a kitchen or any running water downstairs, but I feel like I really went into the entire process with like a lot of optimism because I just had this like really grateful heart that, that it was happening, that it allowed me to put a really positive spin on the whole thing. Like even when I was lugging up and downstairs with buckets of water because the only running water in our house is this tiny little bathroom uh, sink upstairs. Now all that being said, the process of losing more than a quarter of my house and more recently having to lose the whole bottom half of my house when we redid all the floors um, made some areas feel a lot more tight because we have basically all of our possessions from a kitchen, a playroom, an extra bathroom shoved into the rest of our house. And I feel like having all of this extra stuff has made some areas of my house that typically were not super well organized. It's made them like so obviously unorganized and so obviously cluttered um, where before like I could kind of ignore it. It's gotten to the point where like I couldn't ignore it anymore. Like these places needed to be taken care of. But I finally have found some really good solutions for them and I wanted to bring you guys along as I organize these hard to organize spots in my home and share the solutions that I came up with, came up, came up with for them, came up for, came up, that I came up with for them, that I came up with for them. Oh my God, I don't even have words. You can tell I'm a little sick. I know my voice is a little gone. So we're gonna go through some of the organizational struggle spots, but I wanna let you know, I follow like three basic steps when I am tackling any like new organizational spot or there's like a spot that like continually, continually, continue, oh my God. You guys know what I mean. I don't have all of my words today. Those spaces that just keep getting disorganized. I have three steps that I follow when it is time to organize a space. First, I always measure the space. I wanna know exactly what the dimensions are of drawers, of cabinets, of shelves. This way, any organizational structures or bins or totes I buy, I can make sure I'm buying the right ones. And this comes from lots and lots of experience because I have one too many times bought like the wrong sized thing. Two, I identify the pain points of the space. And three, I identify the stuff that it is and it needs to be stored in this space. Okay, so up first is my secretary desk. I get questions about this piece of furniture every time I share it, so let me just quickly cover it. This is a secretary desk. It looks sort of like a hutch, but a piece pulls out so I can sit and work at it. I search for this piece of furniture like pretty much since we bought the house. We don't live in a huge house. It's like 1100 square feet. I work from home full time, so does my husband. I needed a place to work that wasn't like its own exclusive office. I don't have my own office space. Obviously during the non-reno life, this is where I sit and work. However, during the reno, it started to become just a dumping ground for all sorts of stuff and the top and the drawers were just like overflowing with random things. Okay, so we're gonna walk through the three steps on the secretary desk. The first thing I do is I measure the space. Next, I identify the pain points, which for this was just that a ton of things get thrown into these drawers with no rhyme or reason. And then I take note of what needs to get stored in this area. It's a lot of random stuff. I have some paperwork, I have some computer stuff, I have some work stuff. Probably a reason that this continually gets disorganized because it's just a lot of random items that need to belong in here. So then next thing I did was I hit up the internet to get the storage bins that I needed for this. Um, and I went to the containerstore.com. Now I will just say as a like preface to this entire video, a lot of the stuff I got um, for the videos from the container store and I enjoy the container store quite a bit. Um, but I don't necessarily suggest shopping container store online. I've done it multiple times because our closest container store is over an hour away, but I just don't love it for a couple of reasons. One, I don't love that you can't see the product in real life. Storage bins can be really hard to shop online. You can't tell exactly what the quality of the plastic is like. You can't tell exactly what the drawer, like, functioning is gonna be. The other thing about the container stores too, their shipping is not very good. 
Um, they ship it in like 8 million different boxes. So now you have a thousand boxes that you need to take to the transfer station to get recycled. And they're not super good about like wrapping the stuff up. So anytime I've ever ordered from Container Store, I always end up with at least one item that is like damaged or broken when it gets to you, which is just like annoying and irritating when you're trying to work on an organization project. So anyways, that's just my little like disclaimer. I do like the Container Store a lot. A lot of these products I really, really enjoy, but shopping them online is not always the best option. What I ended up getting for the secretary desk was a total win. So like I said, I measured the drawers and I was able to get a variety of these small bins that almost fit perfectly into the drawers. One of the most frustrating parts of organizing is when you get all jazzed up to organize and you buy a bunch of bins and you get home and they don't fit just right, or you didn't buy the right amount of numbers, or like you, they fit in there, but then there's like this wasted space and you can't get another container into that space. That's always sort of irritating. So that's a big part of why I measure because that way as I am shopping and as I'm like looking at different products, I can get ones that are going to maximize the space the most. I also got three paper acrylic trays to use in the middle drawer to organize all of my paper storage. I think it's so funny because so often sometimes the littlest tweak can make all the difference. Um, between a total junk drawer and an organized drawer. Just simply having the visual reference of where to put something can assure that when you put something down, it's going where it belongs and stays easily organized to be found when you need it later. All right, moving right along, the next spot was our bathroom. This bathroom has been a constant organizational issue since me, for me since we purchased this home. The prior owners redid this bathroom right before we moved in and it's very like beautiful, but it's not super functional. They put these like um, open shelves and it's the only storage in the entire bathroom. There's not like a linen closet. There's no other like shelving or anything. And the problem with storage in the bathroom is the majority of what you're storing in bathrooms isn't pretty stuff that you wanna like put out on open shelves. It's like shampoos and like, you know, medication and like stuff that necessarily doesn't look pretty on open shelves. Not to mention, um, over like the last year, I've really learned a lot about like what organization um, solutions work for me because there's obviously lots of different kinds of organizational solutions, but some of them work better for different people. I have found that I'm not somebody who really likes the style of open shelves. I don't like having all of my stuff displayed out how I can see it. And so the open bins on open shelves didn't necessarily work for me because I'm the kind of person that um, if there's an organizational structure in place, I'll use it, but I need it to be quick. I want it stored and organized, but like out of my view, if you will. Like when we redid the kitchen, there were like multiple times that there were options to do some type of open shelving. Um, and I was like, I don't want any open shelving. Like we put an appliance garage in the kitchen so that I could store stuff behind there. If any of you follow uh, Clutterbug here on YouTube, shout out to Cass. I'm definitely what she considers a ladybug. If you don't know what I'm talking about, she has different organizational styles. You can take her quiz. It's like actually super interesting. Anyways, the point is I always just wish that those open shelves were drawers. So I was looking for something. I really wanted something that would maximize the depth of these shelves to not have too much wasted space. Um, since they're pretty deep and I actually found these drawers that were literally the exact depth and width of the shelves. Like I was totally floored that they were the exact size. So I found there was one short one and one tall one. It was going to be the exact height of my shelves. I was super jazzed. Unfortunately, when they arrived and I put them in, I realized that I hadn't accounted for this small piece of wood that holds the shelves up. Um, and it prevented me from doing a small and a tall on each shelf. And this kind of stuff, it happens often when we're trying to organize hard places in our home. So you, you sometimes, you know, even when you have the best game plan, you've done all the measuring, you come up with stuff. So you need to be flexible. You need to be a problem solver with this stuff. Two small shelves fit really well and then a tall one could stand alone with a little space on top of it for some items. I even found a good spot for the second large bin um, underneath the vanity. So minor setback, but I was able to find a really good solution and still answer the pain points that I'd been struggling with. All right, moving right along to my son's room. So with the renovation where we usually sort of have our like play area um, is being renovated. So we kind of had to move the playroom into my son's room, which actually overall, I kind of like the process. It's nice having his toys there um, and like stored there. But the issue is there are these built-in cabinets. Now these were another purchase from the previous owner. 
The extra storage is nice, but these are actually wardrobes, so they're not exactly set up for like toy or product storage. I do use this space to store some hanging clothes since we don't have a closet in our bedroom, but the space on the bottom was just totally wasted space. It was just piles of random stuff because there was not an organizational structure in place. So again, I measure, I identify what I want to store here, and identify the pain points. So I want to be able to store toys, and the pain point is most toys are smaller pieces, and this area is just kind of open shelves with no structure or dividers of any kind. So I actually found these sweater boxes. They fit really perfectly onto the shelves. They were stackable, so I could easily maximize my space. I really love these storage bins, by the way, if you want like my personal review of this item. I will link, again, everything down below, but my only complaint is these are one of the ones that came damaged in shipping. It's sort of made of that like nicer hard plastic, which tends to be more brittle. And while we're talking about kid stuff, I wanna share this dollar store option that totally did work for me, and that's using these clear bins to organize my daughter's top drawer. This had become a total dumping ground again. Like I said, I need my organizational structure to be easy. I need to be able to open the drawer, drop it in, and move on with my life. And so that's what was happening in this drawer. I was opening and dropping and moving on, but there was no structure. So it just all ended up mixed together. So these Dollar Tree bins were just the perfect solution to keep things separated by what each thing was. Just simply having the visual reference of where to put something can assure that when you put something down, it's going where it belongs. All right, my friends, that does it. That was some um, organizing and some of my hard to organize spots, the places that constantly like we're getting disorganized. I finally took the time to really think about it and create solutions for them. Again, a lot of it comes down to having a game plan and doing some planning ahead of time. Measure your space, think about the pain points, and then think about what you need to store there all before you go out and like excitedly buy your bins. That way you're buying things that are going to maximize the space the most. You're more likely to stick with them and you're less likely to be like, these bins didn't work. Now I need to go buy something else. As always, thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Remember to be kind to yourself and others, and I will see you all in my next video.